Hello, this is Don, Victor Alpha 3, Alpha Zulu Victor, and I'm going to show you today how to program the DMRD 500 Alinko uh, DRM uh, digital radio. The first thing you need to do is download the DRMD 500 software, and it is available online. You can do a quick search. I will try to provide a link for it uh, below. Now, when the radio arrives, there are only two frequencies programmed into it. Uh, the uh, two frequencies you see here, one on VHF, one on UHF. And if you, let's go through the left here and take a look at the uh, various options. So under public, you have channel. These are your channels that you program in. Zones. Uh, there is a default zone one. A scan list, there's a default scan list with the two channels that we mentioned in, in the first part. A roaming zone, FM, to listen to FM radio. Auto repeater frequency offsets, 6 kilohertz for uh, VHF and 5 kilo, uh, megahertz for UHF. Your roaming channels. basic information on the radio optional settings these are all the settings that you uh, use for example optional buttons whether you want the volume on or off whether you want beeps uh, when you change menu options or no beeps or loud beeps things like recording video uh, audio digital functions so Everything is in here, power on, you want to welcome, do you want a photo, do you want to upload your own photo, and so forth. Alarm settings. I'm not going to get into some of these features. Uh, they're really not necessary. They're only fancy bells and whistles. Uh, local information that will download from the radio. The radio is not connected right now, so it won't do anything. And hotkeys. Then there are the digital sections. Radio ID list. You can have in the DMRD 500 up to 250 radio IDs. So if you have more than one radio ID, you can enter them here. Or if you have more than one person using this radio and they all have their own uh, radio IDs, they can program them in here. Talk groups. These are the talk groups that are used on uh, DMR, and you would put all of your different talk groups in here. Encryption codes. This is mainly for commercial use. As an amateur radio operator, you're not allowed to encrypt um, your communications, so these are really not to be used some prefabricated SMS messages uh, makes it easier for you to uh, send SMS messages receive group call list I'm not going to get into this too much same with AES encryption I'm not going to get into that that's mainly commercial and then you have your digital contacts list this digital contacts list is currently blank these would be all of the contacts that you want to program in uh, for people that you would be talking to. A friend list, if you have specific friends that you want to program in. Talk alias. And then the analog section. So you have your analog address book. I'm not going to get into these. Um, again, these are just fancy bells and whistles. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing you require to enter in is a frequency or a channel. So in here is a simplex channel, 15, uh, 5 megahertz. It's digital on high power, 12.5K bandwidth, no CTS or DTA, D, CT, CSS codes. We're just going to call it channel 1, contact is contact 1, 
and the radio ID is my radio. So the radio ID again goes back to uh, in here the radio ID list. So here you would enter your DMR ID or digital ID and your name, usually your call sign. And this is a VHF simplex analog. Uh, and again, the same same idea. Now in analog, of course, you're not going to get your uh, digital ID is less important. However, they ha have it programmed in here. So we'll follow that uh, procedure. Now, let's program in a repeater. So the first repeater we're going to program in is the, rec the uh, receive frequency is 443.225. Double click to open. So we're going to give this repeater a name, and I'm just going to call it repeat 1. And you could put the city or the repeater name or the repeater uh, ID in there. And the frequency is 443.225. And the transmit frequency, it's 5 kilohertz offset, so 448.225. It's a digital frequency. We're going to use a transmit power of high because it's not real close. If it was close to you, we recommend that you use the lowest possible frequent uh, power range setting, and that's only to avoid uh, interference with uh, other stations or uh, other equipment in the area. Bandwidth 2.5 kilohertz. Transmit permit um, for DMR. We usually go to channel free. So if somebody is talking on the channel, you will not be able to key in and interrupt them. Scan list. We don't have any scan lists at this point. The radio ID is my radio that we uh, talked about earlier. You'll need to know the color code, which is similar to the CTCSS codes on analog. In digital, we use color codes. So the color code can be anywhere from 1 or 0 to 15. One is the default uh, color code. Slot. There are two slots in DMR. Slot 1 and slot 2. So you need to know which slot to use for the various talk groups. And you can get that information from the website uh, on the repeater that you're programming. It will usually tell you which slot to use. If you don't know, slot 1 is the default. And then the receive group list. We don't have any of those programmed in. It's just, just the receive group one, but we'll get to that early uh, later. And then digital encryption, of course, is off. Call confirmation, all the rest of this we'll leave alone. This bottom section is for analog only. We're doing a digital, so we'll just uh, avoid that. I'm not going to touch too much on uh, analog. It's fairly straightforward if you've uh, programmed analog before or if you look at any video on analog programming, analog repeaters, uh, it's all the, all the same. And DMR mode, we're going to go repeater mode. You can have simplex, double slot, or repeater. We're just going to go repeater mode for this one. And that's it. That's our first channel programmed in. So we'll say OK. And there it is. Okay, for frequencies, when you program them in, it wants to know for DMR, what talk group. So f let me uh, clarify this. For each repeater, you have to program the same frequency with all of the different talk groups. So the first talk group we're going to put in, we'll put in local. Now, the talk group numbers are entered in the digital section under contact talk groups. So we're going to add a talk group. The first talk group we're going to add will be local. You can get a list of talk groups from uh, the various website sources. This one here is the Brand, Brand Meister uh, talk group. Brand Meister, Meister, Brand Meister. 
It's a bit of a tongue twister. And we're going to put in a local talk group. So local is TG9, talk group 9. So the name is local. It's a call group, and it is call group 9. And no alert. Then we'll say OK. We'll also add uh, the worldwide talk group, which is 91. So we'll add another one here, worldwide. It's a call group, and we'll put uh, 99. I believe that was what it the, the number. Sorry, worldwide 91. 91. And OK. And then we will put in a simplex talk group. And it is a private call because you're, you're going to be using Simplex for talking to one person. And we will set that up as 99. And if you look in the Brandmeister, Brand, Brandmeister list, there is no 99. So we can go ahead and use that. All right, that's all we're going to set up for now. You would typically set up only the groups or talk groups that you wish to talk on. If, if you're not interested in specific talk groups, you do not need to enter them here. Uh, why waste time? So now back to channel. And we're on our server here, our repeater. And we're going to go back in here, and we're going to change the contact to... We're going to go in, and we're going to change the contact and here are the four that we had entered in, the one that was entered previously, and the three that we entered. So the contact for this one is going to be uh, worldwide. So we'll click this one and add that. So this is now the worldwide. So the channel name will be repeater1, and we want to identify this. We can't have several frequencies all with the same name, so we'll call this worldwide. So it is repeater1 worldwide. Okay. Now we're going to right click and copy. Go down here, right click and paste. And we're going to open this up and we're going to take the same repeater, but we're going to add a local group in here. Local. And we'll go to our contact list and select local. Double click. Local, local, OK. So now we have those two talk groups programmed in for this repeater. That easy. OK, so now the next thing we need to do is create a zone. You're allowed a number of uh, channels per zone, and then you have several zones, or in this particular radio, we have up to 250 zones. So zone one, uh, we will edit this one. In zone one, we will call repeater one. You can give it any name you want. You can call it by the name of the city, the name of the district, or the repeater call sign, whatever name you, you see fit. And then in here, you have on the left the available channels, and then on the right, the member channels. All of the channels that you have programmed in under the channel list will be on the left column. On the right column are only those channels that you select. Uh, in this case here, they, there are a couple of default channels. We'll just get rid of those. Now, in Repeater 1, we want to have Repeater 1 Worldwide and Repeater 1 Local. So those frequencies are now in that zone. And we select OK. Scan list. 
if you want to have a scan list, that's fine. What you would do with a scan list is you would open up your uh, list, and we could call this repeater one. It could have a different name or the same name, doesn't matter. Uh, Okay, and then in here we will get rid of these two and we will add the frequencies that we want to scan. So it'll scan through these frequencies and stop whenever there's any activity. You can have a priority channel. And we could say, okay, priority channel select one and priority channel one is worldwide. So if there's somebody on the worldwide uh, talk group, that will take precedence and it will stop. Um, but it will check this one more frequently. In the case here we only have two frequencies, it really doesn't matter. So we'll select OK. Uh, roaming zones. I'm not going to get into roaming zones. That's a feature of this particular radio. It's not really a DMR feature. Uh, and basically what you do here is you can put in um, member channels in different uh, zones so you can when you're roaming or driving around into different districts it'll pick up the different repeaters uh, FM is uh, you this radio has the capability of having channels for FM music uh, FM radio stations talk shows whatever you like to listen on regular FM uh, you can program them in putting the frequency in and adding and you can scan them and so forth uh, I, I don't bother with that. Uh, the FM radio in the in the vehicle is good enough for me. I don't need my two-way radio to also have FM music. But if that's the only radio you have, you might want some FM music. Auto repeater offset frequencies. These are just standard frequency offsets. Uh, roaming channel. These are the f uh, servers that are available for roaming. Again, I'm not going to get into this in to any depth, but uh, these repeaters are programmed in. And when your radio loses contact with a repeater, it will ping the other repeaters in this list and find one that is closer to you with, uh, with that is within range, and your radio will switch to that repeater. Basic information on the radio. Optional settings. So, for example, power on, you've got uh, welcome Alinko, you might want to put your call sign in here. Uh, passwords, if you want a password when your radio comes on or not, uh, to prevent uh, non licensed users from using your radio. Default startup channel, if you want to have a specific channel, for example, repeater one when I start it up and I want it on worldwide and uh, I can turn this on. So whenever the radio is turned on, it'll go to this frequency. Power save mode is off. FM radio is off. Uh, the display, you can change the colors of the call signs and, and so forth on the display and customize it. Okay, so for example, uh, the call sign display color is red and different uh, background pictures uh, it's so it's quite configurable you you would set this up to whatever preferences you have how bright the screen is going to be uh, this is set for the maximum brightness it's a very good clear screen and you have all of these preferential settings okay alarm setting I'm not going to get into that uh, local information it, draws from the radio and then your hotkeys so you can set up uh, various hotkeys so that is basically it for programming the frequency now when you speak with someone in uh, in DMR their ID is displayed on your screen but that's not transmitted in the group the only thing that gets transmitted in the conversation or in the data bit stream is the D DMR ID. So all of the rest of the information you need to download and you would load that into your contacts list. Now in the contacts list here you can have up to 300,000 contacts. Now you don't want to have to type all those in. 
you could type in just the people you know and uh, put their contacts in here. Then when you're in a talk group and somebody's talking, it would just show their uh, DMR ID. It wouldn't show any of their name information. However, you have lots of memory, so let's go ahead and program that. Now, how would we do that easily rather than typing it all in? We have to make sure that our database is in the same format as the radio will import. So how do we know the format that the radio will import? Well, the way we do that is we go into the digital contacts list. We create a digital contact. So we'll call it contact one, private call, DMRD ID, we'll call it 11, call alert none, uh, city, um, We'll just put the city in here. Repeater number. Um, doesn't really matter. State or province. Uh, we'll put state. And I'm just saying state. Um, you would put the name of the state, for example, Virginia, South Carolina, whatever. Uh, country. Uh, I'm just going to put country, but you would put Canada, USA. Great Britain, whatever the country is, and remarks. You can put any remarks. Okay, so we've created a fake contact, and this is only for the purposes of discovering how the format needs to be. So then we go into the tools of the of the software here, and we go to export, and we're going to export this contact list. So we go down here to Digital Contact List and click on it. And it's going to come up here. And we're going to find our folder called C Contacts. Uh, go down here to C and then down to Contacts right here. I put it in that folder. And we're going to call this the DR, DR500 Contacts List. Uh, we can do Contacts. And we're going to export in a CSV format. So save. Now we'll click export. Export complete. OK. OK, we open up our file folder, go to the contacts that we exported from our code plug software. And let's open it in Excel and have a look at it, see the format. And you want to take note of this format. So you see here there's number, and it's numbered. So number, radio ID, and the, the wording needs to be the same as well. So call sign here, you see call sign is capital C, and it's all one word. You have to make sure that it is done the exact same way in your import. So call sign name. I'm just writing this on a piece of paper um, so that I don't have to refer back to it then. Let me just bring this into view here a little bit better. So all of these have to be identical. So name, city, state, country, remarks, call type, two words, and call alert. Okay. Now, we close this. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so those are the contacts, uh, or the sample contact format in the CSV file. The next thing we need to do is get a list of contacts. So there's a software package out there put out by a gentleman on uh, N0GSG. Is his call sign, and he's created this software package called DMR Contact Manager. It's very, very good. Tom A. Wheeler. You can do an internet search to find this. It's uh, easy to find. Uh, just do a search on N0GSG, and I'm sure it'll pop up. In here, you have uh, information. Now, we want to download the uh, DMR ID database. So we go to the bottom right hand corner here and it says import contacts from DMR online database. So that will pull the contacts right out of the uh, DMR online database. Perfect. 
All right, so here you can search, uh, perform a search criteria. For example, if you only want people from Canada or the United States, you can just enter United States or Canada, and it will filter all of the contacts and only show you those people that fit that criteria. Uh, because the DMRD 500 has a database uh, availability of 300,000 contacts, we don't really need to worry about that. I think there are only about 198,000 contacts worldwide, so we're well within our scope of the radio, and we can import every contact in existence. So we'll do that here. For you, uh, if your radio doesn't support it, or if you don't wish to have all those contacts, you can go ahead and filter uh, to receive which contacts you like. Now down here we're going to use percent %f, percent %l, because we want first name, last name, and uh, we're done with all the selection. We're going to go for private call. It is group call, all call, private call. Uh, because these are digital personal contacts, we're going to go with private call. And uh, now we're ready, so we're done selecting. Uh, and we're going to uh, click on entire database worldwide. Here we go. Now, I'm not 100% familiar with this software. There may be some things I'm a little bit uh, misinformed on, but you can uh, go ahead and, and read the manual and uh, get information on it. So here we go. We have all of our contacts. Uh, we received 198,796. Yeah, they're all in here. Okay. So now I'm going to export a CSV file. So click on Export. First name, last name is the search criteria. We have to select the radio type. I'm just going to go for the TYT MD 2017. Uh, it fairly, the contacts list in that radio fairly matches closely to the radio that we're working with, so we'll go with that. The DR MD 500 is not yet supported. Uh, hopefully, if you contribute and donate to the author, he may add that for us. Uh, in the future that will make things quite easy to update our radio. So now, first name, last name, we're going to go ahead and export this CSV file. We have to find the location. We're going to export it to the same location as the other CSV file. So we'll go down here to Contacts, right here. And there's our exported file from the radio. And we're going to give this one a name worldwide. We'll just call it WW and export. Yeah, there we go. And we're done with the software. There are the contacts. Let's give that a few seconds to open up. There we go shrink this a bit so it fits in the screen and here are all of the contacts okay and these are worldwide so you have Russia United States Canada Japan Republic China Australia Asia everywhere okay all contacts worldwide that have a DMR number a radio ID number are here but if you look at the list, the list is not in the same uh, way that we wanted our list. We had the first column was number, so we're going to insert a column here. And we're going to call that number. And it was just NO, like that. And here, we're going to put a number one. And then here, to make things easier, we're just going to put uh, equals. This is an Excel formula, so you can only do this with Excel spreadsheets. We'll put equals. Click on that, which comes up to A2, and it will hit plus 1. 
and then enter. That should give us a number two. Then we'll click on that square, right click and copy, and then we'll click on the square below it, go to the bottom of the spreadsheet, and follow along with this. It's fairly easy to do. It saves a lot of typing. We'll go to the last square right here, 198798. Hold the shift key. So I'm pushing the shift key and I'm going to click. And everything turns dark. Now I'm going to right click in this dark area and hit paste. And what it will do is it will populate that whole list with the numbers starting with one and going by one all the way to the bottom. And that saves us from having to type in one, two, three, four, 198,000 times. The next column is radio ID, and that's exactly what it was, so that's fine. The next column is call sign, but you see here there's a capital S. We're going to change that to a lowercase s. Then the next column was name, and we had chosen first and last name, which it has. Perfect. Then the next column was city. We have nickname in here, so we're just going to right click and delete that column. So there we go. City, state, country. Then we had remarks. So we'll put a column in here, remarks. And then in column I, we had call type, call type. Two words. And then we had call alert. Now we can go ahead and open the other uh, list just to compare. And you see with remarks it has any. Call type is private call. And call alert is none. So we're just going to repeat that anywhere. And we're going to go remarks is any. Call type, private call. Make that column wider. And over here we'll put none. And then we can just copy that, click on the line below, go right to the bottom again. Uh, shift, click, right click, paste. Right click, copy, click on here, go to the bottom, shift, click, right click, paste. Go here, right click, copy, go here, go to the bottom, shift click, right click, paste. There we go. Now our exported database or exported CSV file looks identical to, in format that is, to the uh, one from the radio. So the radio had number, radio ID, call sign, name, city, state, country, remarks, call type, call alert. Perfect. So we can close this. We're done with it. We can take this file here and we can save it. So save. Okay, it says some features, because we're saving as a CSV and this is an actual spreadsheet, some features are going to be off, so it doesn't matter. We're going to keep the format, so say yes. And we're done. So we can exit the spreadsheet. All right. So the DMR Worldwide CSV is the, is the spreadsheet now that we want, and it's, it is now formatted in the way that we need it. So we can close this. Don't save. It's already been saved. All right, now we go into uh, the contacts. We go to Tools, go to Import, and say, okay, and we're going to import 
our digital contacts. So here's a digital contact list. And we're going to import the worldwide contacts. And worldwide contacts, we're going to say OK, open, and then now import. Now we're importing 198,000 contacts, so it, it is going to take a, a few moments depending on your uh, speed of your computer, your processing power, and so forth. And when you write these to the radio, it does take some time. To write this number of contacts to the radio is going to probably take a couple of minutes. So uh, that's fine because the software allows you to write both contacts and channel information or just channel information. So when you make changes to the channel information, if you add a zone or if you add a, uh, a repeater, you don't have to import or write all of the contacts back to the radio. They're already there, so it, it'll skip that and save you a lot of time. Um, however, if you want to add contacts or update your contact list, um, say every so many months you want to update this to get all the new members that uh, updated or that applied for their digital ID number, uh, then you can go ahead and, and do the process, repeat the process that we just performed and import the updated list. It, it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of uh, work, but uh, it's well worth it. So I'm going to skip ahead here and uh, let this do its thing. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so now our import is complete. So we hit OK, and here we go. All right, so now we have the name, first and last, city, uh, type of call. Repeater number is the call sign of the uh, individual in the province. Uh, call alert, none. Uh, and the uh, DMR ID is uh, their ID number. So there we go. We're in. Okay, so now when you're looking here, we have a digital uh, contact. Now, the digital contact channel one here is using the contact one, and it should actually be using simplex. Contact one is just a, a number, and that's fine. However, if you're talking to somebody on Simplex, they have to have the same contact number on DMR. And nobody's going to have this contact number. They're going to go with the 99, which is the default de facto Simplex number. So we'll just select that. That's one of the things I ran into. When you're talking Simplex between two DMR radios, the contact uh, or group name number has to be the same. So if you whatever frequency you're on here, if you're using digital DMR, you have to have the same color code, the same time slot, and the same uh, contact number. If you don't, uh, you will see the uh, S meter go up, but you will not hear the other person, or they won't hear you. So that's something to keep in mind when you're talking to somebody simplex using DMR. Now, if you're talking simplex using analog, that's a whole different story. When you go into analog, then you, uh, even if you have a CT, uh, CTCSS, you'll still hear the other person. It's just you, you, they may not hear you or whatever. So you turn these all off. Everything's off, you don't worry about it, and you connect. But in digital, it's a different story. The parameters have to match. If they don't match, you won't speak to the other person. And that's to allow more than one uh, use of the same frequency. So, for example, if this was used commercially and you had a fleet of five trucks, each truck would have maybe a different contact number and when you talk to truck number five, truck number one, 
two, three, and four cannot hear what you're saying to number five, and they cannot hear what number five is saying back to you. So they, they will see the green light come on that there is a conversation going on, but they won't know what it is. They won't be able to hear it. So that, that's one of the purposes for that. Uh, however, for us, we want to talk simplex. We don't necessarily want to uh, have the other person have the same contact number. We want to use a general contact number. So we'll just select that. All right, so let's have a review for the DRMD500 code plug. So the first thing we have here in the public section is the channel. So we program all of our channel frequencies, then zones. We have to create our zones and in the zone you have a number of channels that you add to that zone. So you would have, for example, this is repeater one, you might have uh, for the next zone you might be a city such as say New York uh, or, or uh, Columbia and then for number three you might have another repeater or another city or whatever and in each of those zones you will have a group of channels and you can have um, as many channels as, as you can program in here. I think the maximum number of channels per zone for this particular radio is probably around 64. I could be wrong. Don't uh, <laughs> don't flame me on the comment section if I am. It's just I'm just guessing at this point. And then you have a scan list, uh, all of those channels that you programmed in in that zone. If, if you want to scan them, you don't have to scan them all. So if you had, for example, ten frequencies in there, but you only want to scan eight of them, uh, you would just put eight of them in the scan list. Rolling zone FM which we talked about briefly, auto repeater offset frequencies. Uh, these are for uh, when you go into the radio and you want to manually program in a, uh, a repeater, it will use these for auto offsets. Uh, I don't really use it. Roaming channel, if you want to add a series of repeaters in different areas that you travel to frequently so that the radio will switch between them seamlessly you can add that in that's a feature of the DRMD 500 uh, the basic information on the radio optional settings uh, just a word when you get your radio I would suggest that you first go into the radio connect to the radio using this software now the first thing you would do is set the COM port so you go down here you select whatever COM port your radio is plugged in on and then you go to program and read from radio when you read the date the data from the radio as it is when you stock when you first purchase it save that file call it uh, factory reset whatever uh, name and save that that way if you go into these settings and you set something wrong and you don't know what you did and you're not sure where that setting was uh, and you get all totally confused you can always return the radio back to factory also if you decide to sell the radio you can return it back to factory and sell it so that's just a bit of advice uh, alarm settings we're not we're not worried about alarms we're not setting them local information that reads from the radio and hotkeys uh, we're not going to really worry about that that's something when you get more comfortable with the radio you can go ahead and do now we have a section called digital in digital you have your radio ID list that's the DMR ID or the D digital ID that you received from uh, the uh, authority that issues digital IDs the group and your call sign. And then you have your top groups. And just uh, to give you an idea here, uh, I'm going to import the top groups. Uh, I'm going to import a pile of them. So let me just go here to tool, import, and I'm going to import a top group, contact top groups and the location of that is 
this here. And import. Import complete. So these are the different talk groups. So as you can see, there are quite a number of talk groups. 119. And that's the uh, Brand Meister uh, talk group list. Okay, you'll notice the talk groups that I entered, 99 is still there. All right. We go up to our channel here and we go to this digital. Uh, it's set to dynamic top talk, which is group 10. We can change that back to uh, 99. When you import a list like this, it may change some of your settings. So you have to verify that everything is good. And uh, encryption codes, again, we're not going to get into encryption codes. Uh, that's primarily for commercial. Your uh, prefabricated SMS messages, you can have uh, quite a number of those. A hundred, who's going to remember a hundred of them? But you have your comment once, thank you, you're welcome, goodbye. Happy, happy every day, okay might want to edit some of those. The receive call group list. AES encryption, so this is a second type of encryption. Your digital contacts list, and it's going to load from 1 to 20,000 at this point. It takes a little bit of time. There we go. And Okay, and a friend list. So a friend list is uh, if you have some uh, buddies that you converse with quite often, you might want to put Victor Alpha 3, Alpha Zulu Victor. Do a search. It will find me. There I am. And I will add that to my friends list. You would add whoever you want uh, to the friends list and say, okay, talk alias. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Forgive me for that. You would have to uh, see if you can find documentation on this code plug software. And then analog, we're not going to get into that. That's just an address book at two tone, five tone settings, DTMS settings, and uh, it really doesn't apply to digital at all. So there we have the DRMD500. Uh, code plug programming software uh, and how to program a DMR radio or this particular DMR radio. I did find a couple of videos uh, on the subject of the DRMD500. One was okay, uh, the other one was not very good. So uh, I decided to make this myself, maybe make it a little bit easier, go through everything in a novice point of view, as I am a novice. I've only been licensed for a short period at the time of making this video. So it took me quite a while to figure out how to program uh, this radio properly so that I could actually start receiving digital uh, chat rooms or talk groups and uh, talk with my other DMR handheld directly and to use it to receive uh, regular uh, analog traffic. So I hope you like it. I hope it's been informative for you and I hope it uh, helps you out uh, and maybe save you some of the time that I had to waste. Uh, I don't really call it a waste. It was a learning experience but uh, it might save you some frustration. So, 73s from Victor Alpha 3, Alpha Zulu Victor in Ontario, Canada. We hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers and goodbye.